you uh, from one of my teachers. So find your way to a comfortable seated position. As you sit tall, whatever is comfortable, whether it's crossed in your legs or sitting hips to heels, either will work. Now, one of my teachers, Baron, you may have heard of Baron Baptiste of Power Yoga. He wrote this really lovely, quite short book called Perfectly Imperfect. And this one chapter is one that comes to mind in times where we're making decisions and the decision to travel was a decision. The decision to see family is part of that decision. There's lots of different aspects in our life right now where we're having to choose. And this is titled The Dance of Yes and No. So as you sit tall, close your eyes and just listen to the words and see how they land. Perhaps you'll resonate with a piece of the words that are, are written here in this book. They certainly are ones that I use common and regularly in my own life. Take a deep breath in and a sighing breath out. The oldest, shortest words, yes and no, are those which require the most thought. There are only two ways we show up on our mat in life as a yes or as a no. Yes carries the energy of possibility. No carries the energy of resistance. Yes expresses your willingness to claim your power and use it to discover the real meaning of commitment. Yes invites you to expand and to come into your full creative expression. It opens you up and affirms your willingness to be teachable when you don't have the know-how to get where you want to go. Yes affirms the existence of a destination in the practice beyond mere physical gain. No shows up with very different energy. It is closed, rigid, and often stubborn. It takes the form of excuses, complaints, procrastination, resistance, frustration, and so on. No impedes or flat out stops you in your tracks. You are always in a dance of yes and no. Being a yes for anything automatically makes you a no for something else. In fact, if we cannot point to what we are saying no to, then our yes means nothing. If you are a yes for peace, you are a no for war. If you are a yes for creating vibrancy and health in your body, you are a no for ingesting junk food, doing drugs, and so on. If you are a yes for full acceptance in your relationship, you are a no for criticizing and trying to change the person you love. If you are a yes for growth, you are a no for procrastination and stagnation. I share this with you to invite you to engage in your own inquiry of what am I a yes for in my practice? What do I refuse to say no to? Or to put it another way, how am I showing up on my mat and in my life? With your hands resting, sip the breath in slowly through the nose, your filtration process of Filling up every aspect of your lungs, relaxing the shoulders down from the ears. And when you're full, pause for an instant. Then steadily re release the breath in a way that is the same space you took up to bring it in. There might be a soft whisper. If you're breathing out through the nose, you'll hear it through the base of the throat. If you breathe out through the lips, there may be a shh, a slowing of that shushing sound to release the breath. Keep going with that conscious inhale, and perhaps counting. And if you can, see if you could count eventually to 10 in and 10 out.
be a yes for expanding your lungs past the comfort level. That it will feel like you're straining to breathe in more in order to stretch the muscles within the lungs. To ask more of a part of your body is asking it to grow. But without, and always watching that edge, without pushing past it too quickly. We want to push into our edge and then move that bar further and further each time. Do one more full breath in, full breath out. Bring your hands to meet. Feel free to set an intention if you feel it's needed to keep you focused today. Otherwise, perhaps dance between your yes and no, or perhaps take on the yes in your practice. Yes to keep moving, yes to keep breathing, yes to what will come if I try, if I just put the effort forth to the depth that I can and do my very best, what I will receive because of it. Bow your head to your heart and dedicate your practice or make a wish to the universe in any other fashion you choose. And we're going to start today with a kundalini breathwork practice that I really enjoy. It's a bit abnormal. Some would call it a bit strange or weird. But you're going to take your hands and place your thumb to the pinky finger pad and almost like little C shapes with your hands. My teacher calls them little crab claws. And you have bent elbows by your sides. And we're going to do our, um, our capital body breath, but we're going to do it with a action of the arms, like you're piercing your fingertips up through the ceiling. Like you wanna push up and out through the sky. And so it'll look like this. Now, if you find it too quick, just slow it down. No problem at all. If you can, keep your eyes closed. Try to maintain the breath for, and we'll see if we can go about two minutes with this, just to clear out some old stagnation. All right, half breath in. As you go here, you may find you get fatigue happening or starting in your shoulders or in your arms. And if you have an injury, be mindful, take breaks as you need to. Otherwise, keep going. See if you can pierce past the place you want to stop mentally. See what else is possible if you just keep going. As it gets harder, you'll definitely feel your mind being a yes or a no, and you can choose which way you want to swing that pendulum. Five, four, three. Two, one, release your arms, hands to your lap. Take a deep breath in and a sighing breath out. And a full breath in. Hold the breath at the top, tuck the chin, pull the shoulders back, navel to spine, squeezing the pelvic floor. Hold for as long as comfortable in your body. Release on the exhale through the nose. Pull the breath out if possible, as long as comfortable. Then breathe in again. Sigh it away. 
Good. Now we'll take the hands, this time thumb across again, but into fists with the hands. And we're just going to take some steady ujjayi breath, but we're going to add an arm movement. And again, these arm movements in the kundalini tradition is to clear the stagnation of energy, or if you've come with a lot of weight or heaviness, um, you might feel this harder today than maybe any other day. The movement for this one is arms straight out strong, and you'll go up like a Y shape, if you're a cheerleader, <laughs> and then you go straight out to the sides, pause, and then slightly down below the shoulders, and then back up to middle, back up into the Y, and all we're doing is steady, Ujjayi, breath in, breath out. The movement doesn't have to match the breath at all. You're just moving the arms through space. Close the eyes now if you haven't already. Do this with a strength and a power through the arms and the shoulders. And know that things that often look simple are much more challenging and difficult when we start down a new path. This is new movement. The body is learning, shifting. Give it lots of breath, both in and out. We sometimes focus more on our inhale, but focus lots on the exhale. And know that you're capable of so much more than our mind often allows at that first stage. If the arms get tired, take breaks where you need to. Again, if you have an injury, take a break anytime. Build up the resilience. You may at this stage start to feel a shift even in your mind. Sometimes I just start to laugh at myself doing this <laughs> because it is shifting the energy, but it's hard. And know that it does get easier when we shift our mentality around it. But yes, this is supporting my growth. I want to continue down this path, this journey of self-inquiry and reflection. Is who I'm being in the world truly who I want to be in this world? Is there a place for shift or to maintain what you've created? Keep the arms strong here. Let's go for one more up, middle, down, release. Palms open in your lap. Deep breath in. Sighing breath out. Relax the shoulders. Take another breath in. Let's do the breath hold if it's there for you. Tuck the chin, pull the shoulders back. Navel to spine, pelvic floor squeeze. Kumbhaka is what this whole lock is called, holding that steadiness, that stillness, that energy, like it's sipping up the back of your spine right into the crown of the head. Exhale when you're ready. Hold the breath out. Breathe in. Let it go. And just sit for a moment. Feel the flush and the weight fall away off the shoulders, off the arms. Anything you are carrying or came with that it's not holding you back from your practice, from your movements today. And as you blink the eyes to open, we'll come into a kneeling position. or hands and knees, tabletop. You can point the toes, sway the hips a little side to side, just releasing any shift from left and right. 
We'll take a simple cat-cow sequence for five. So allowing your shoulders to draw back, your gaze to come forward. Try not to look straight up, because as you can hear, it strains the throat and the neck. And then round out as you exhale, pulling the tail under and the chin in towards the chest. And inhale to lift and lengthen. And exhale to curl and round. Inhale, long breath, inhaling the yes, and exhaling the yes. And sometimes we say inhale one way and exhale the other, but we want to be a yes to things in our life, both directions. But we can also be a no in any movement that isn't feeling like a, an expansion. Perhaps it's contracting. One more. And as you come back to your tabletop, tuck your toes under, sit your hips onto your heels, slide your arms forward to your forearms meet the floor and let your forehead rest for an instant. Deep full breath in, steady breath out. Gradually lifting into your downward facing dog. Bend your right knee, straighten your left leg. Let your head drop heavy. Then bend your right knee, straighten your left leg. Head goes heavy again. Back to center, lift both heels and bend both knees and then sink the heels down and back. Float forward on your inhalation, top of a push-up. Lower the knees, exhale, come all the way down to your belly. Point the toes, lifting the knees, lift the heart to cobra low, eyes looking over the edge of your mat rather than forward. Forward and down, release. Do two more here just to warm up the back body. Breathing in, lengthening the front. Releasing everything. That steady releasing breath out. One more. Then tuck the toes under, up to hands and knees, slide back, hips to heels, and up into downward dog. Take your right leg to the sky. Step your right foot forward, come into a lunge. Make sure that front heel comes all the way up. Your back knee, if it needs a little cushion, give it that cushion it needs. Reach the left arm to the sky, reach the right arm to the sky. Now a simple lunge here, but remembering to breathe up and through. And the through is pulling the hips forward towards your front heel and your front heel towards your back knee. Now you have the option here to take your right hand and hold on to your left wrist and reach over with a bit of an arc towards the right side. Just accentuating the left line of the body. We're not forcing, we're just exploring the breath. You take your chin slightly up and look under your left tricep. See if the breath gets held up or bound in any way, then back off a little. Come back in when you're ready and then rotating the left shoulder slightly back to equalize with the right. One more breath here. Come back to center, hand to knee, hand to the mat, and pull your right knee to straight, and even slide your left hand back. You can have it on a block if you'd like, right hand to your hip, turn your ribs open, subtle twist here, right arm to the sky. Now the right big toe stays anchored. The eyes can look either at your right big toe to maintain the length in your neck, as you pull your shoulders back, or you can trail your gaze towards the sky. Keep tugging your right hip subtly back. 
As you bring your upper arm forward, bend your front knee. The hand comes inside your front knee, either on palm, fingertips, or knuckle. Left hand to your rib cage. Arm to knee connect and turn your ribs open. Taking your left arm to the sky if it's okay on your shoulder. Now remembering the eyes gaze down, you're rooting down through your right foot. Being a yes to extension, a no to compression. As Baron says, and it's so true that at times we're a big yes for something, but we actually don't know what we're saying no to. So the, the yes is almost irrelevant. We're just going through the paces. And when we see both sides, we really start to feel that we're press, pressing away from compression. Now reach the left arm over the ear, bring the left hand all the way down, pick up your back knee, plank, step back, lower, little cobra, lift the heart, releasing forward and down, tuck the toes up and back into downward dog. Left leg to the sky, step the left foot forward. As you bring your right knee down, cushion where you need to. Take the left hand to the knee, right arm to the sky, set your gaze. The other thing that can keep us on track is just setting our focus. Uh, when I think back to my training with Baron, being a yes to something meant truly setting your sights on what you want and being a yes and no for that. So everything else starts to fall away and you start to clear space to truly achieve what you want. Catch the right wrist with the left hand if you haven't already. Side stretch if you'd like. And what I mean by that is there's times or there was a time post-training when, you, you know, as a teacher, you want to be a teacher, but you're not taking the steps to fully do it, to teach classes, to create space, to offer something, or to even just put yourself out there to just try. Maybe you're right now trying on something that's new, that's different, that's uncomfortable, but now is the time to work through those uncomfortable moments. Pull your front heel towards your back knee, open up your toes so you're not gripping to hold the mat. As you release the top wrist, back through center, right hand comes down, left leg goes straight. As the left leg gets straight, right hand under the shoulder, left hand to hip, roll open. Eyes can look to the left big toe, reminding it to stay anchored, otherwise it kind of rolls open. Think about anchoring the roots of what your target is here and you're growing in that direction. As the trees reach for the sun, as you turn a plant in your home in another direction, it still turns itself towards the sun. As you start to bend your front knee, bring your left hand inside your foot and your right hand onto your rib cage. As you roll open, you're pulling your left hip slightly under. You might want to jet out to the back, pull it under then reach up to the sky. Again, your eyes can look in any direction. If the fingers get fatigued, go to your knuckles or use a block or a book or a water bottle. The arm presses to the knee as much as the knee to the arm. Gradually bring your upper hand all the way down. Reframe your front foot. Lift your back knee. Step back. Plank. Chaturanga. 
all the way to the belly point the toes lengthen your spine forward and up and forward and down tuck the toes under and press up and back downward dog take the right leg to the sky step the right foot forward warrior one so the back foot might come up and out a little to sweep the arms up with the ears. Bring your fingertips around behind you and lean forward. Interlace all 10 fingers here. Now, if that's far, grab a strap or a towel, squeeze the elbows back, squeeze the hands straighter and lift the chest up. Now the back knee is getting straighter as the front knee starts to bend a little more. If the knee starts to drag over the toes first, check that your hips are square. Otherwise, take a longer stance. Shine your heart nice and bright and expansive in the direction of your choice. And then hinge forward that halfway, but bring the hands up this time. Maybe you even rest the right rib cage on the right thigh and let your head look straight back. Three, breathe. Pull your heart forward, come up to where you set the hands. Release the arm, sweep up. Hands to the mat, step back, downward dog. Top of a push-up, breathe in. Knees up or down, your choice. This time to the floor if you like that. Otherwise, up dog if you're playing there. Hips and the thighs stay lifted. Downward facing dog. Left leg to the sky. Step the left foot forward. Right foot comes in and out. Sweep up. Hands come around behind. Interlace the opposite hand on top. Hinge subtly forward to clasp the hands and then squeeze elbows back, chest open. Lifting the heart up. Think about drawing the chin back before it goes up. Sometimes we just send the head up and we compress the neck. If we're a yes to the health of our neck, and we're a no to compression in that spine. Check the hips are square, sit a little deeper. And then hinging forward, rib cage on the thigh, just to support, let the head go, reach the arms up. Two more breaths. Coming up to where you clasp the hands, release the hands, reach up. Hands to the mat, breathe out, step back, downward dog. Top of a push up, breathe in. Halfway or all the way down. Up dog or cobra, shoulders are back. Downward facing dog. Deep breath in, full breath out. Step to the top of your mat. Lift halfway as you inhale, long breath. Bow forward, breathe out. Reverse swan dive, come all the way up. And hands to heart center. Steady onto your left foot. Pick up your right knee. Sweep the arms way up overhead, warrior three. You'll have two options here. You can keep the arms where they are or sweep them into airplane. Arms overhead, similar to the work we did at the beginning, can feel much more challenging. But if you're ready for that challenge, take it on. Take it on as a yes, as an expression of opening up into something else. If it's a lot because of injury or anything else in your shoulders, and this feels more expansive, then go there. Two more breaths.
Now bend the standing leg, come all the way up, arms overhead if they were behind, wrap your right leg on top of your left and your right arm under. Eagle arms, squeeze the pinky toe to the outer shin and think there's no lighter air between the thighs. If the toes need to tap the floor for balance, go for it. Bring the elbows up high in front, looking between the wrist creases or right into them. And look past to your goal, your expression. You want to, you want to achieve and be a yes for what you're seeking so much, you'll burst out of your skin for it. And releasing, feet flat. Arms up, tap the fingertips, hands to heart center. Shift onto your right foot. Bend the left knee up in front. Reach the arms overhead. Option to stay here. Option to sweep the arms behind you into airplane. Also note your hip, where is it in space? Be as level in your hips as you'd like to be in your mind. <laughs> Sometimes we feel a little out of balance mentally, physically. Express out through your fingertips, through your center, through the roots of your right foot. If it's a lot on the arms to reach forward, reach back. When we reach overhead, our heart works harder to pump the blood flow through the upper body. It's that test, that push into our resilience, our ability to go further, farther, longer. Reach up, bring the knee up in front. Cross left over right and left arm under. You go the other side. Try not to lean too far forward. If anything, stand a little taller, but then sit lower. So think bending the knees, squeezing the hips to square. Pull the elbows up in front. Breathe for three. For two. Release the legs, release the arms, sweep up. Hands to heart center. As you shift onto your left foot again, take the right knee up in front. This time, as you send the leg back, take the hands back with the foot in full expression back behind you. So much, it's like you were gonna tip over your toes and fly forward. Bend your standing knee and gradually bring your fingertips towards the floor. And this is where a block or a water bottle can really come in handy or bend the knee more to touch down. Keep the upper leg lifted or right leg standing splits. Turn your world a little upside down. Take a peek at your right toes and point all five of them towards the earth. They can be flexed or pointed, but the toes should all be aimed towards the ground. Let your head go. Walk your fingers closer to your left foot. As your left leg gets straighter, maybe catch the back of your calf with your left hand. You might wrap the forearm. And you might play with lifting your right hand. Maybe eventually, right hand catches the ankle too. Perhaps for now, both fingertips are on the floor and you're pushing the shoulders back by pushing the fingertips into the floor. Create length in your neck. Just a couple more breaths here. We're gonna bend the front knee and land into a lunge with your ribs on your front thigh. So you're in a runner's lunge. From here, right hand stays down, left arm to the sky. Back knee stays lifted. Now your left hand comes inside the foot like it did before, but we'll bring the back heel down, warrior two style. Bring the right arm to the sky, side angle. As the knee presses your outer tricep, Maybe float the left fingers. If that's available, you can still use that water bottle or block under your hand. Tuck your left sitting bone under and then come up to warrior two. Full breath in. 
full breath out, sitting in a little deeper, left arm forward, right arm back. From here, we're gonna straighten the front leg, pivot the front toes, take a wide-legged straddle, hips back, soft knees, hinge forward, pausing halfway, fingertips come underneath your shoulders, take a half breath or a full breath in halfway lift, and then bow forward, letting your heart melt and your hands maybe get closer to flat. It might not get flat today, but that's where your fingertips give you that access. Let your head go. Nod yes. Shake no. We can imagine one day your forehead kissing the earth or the crown of your head touching down. And maybe it's already there. And if it is, it's just a signal to bring your feet closer together. But until it does, Maybe bring your feet a little wider. Lean into your toes a little, even into your fingertips, but only so far that you feel that edge. You push into that comfort level. Lift halfway, walking the hands back underneath the shoulders. Hands to shins, arms straight, spine long, come all the way up. Open the arms. Warrior two, come back in. We'll bring the fingertips on either side of the front foot. Come back to your lunge. We're going back to standing splits. Right leg to the sky, but this time halfway lift your heart forward. Now you have the option to take your hands to your heart one at a time or hands to hips and come all the way up to standing, mountain pose. Beautiful. Hitting those levels of challenge as we go. Take a breath to reset. Shifting the weight onto your right foot. Your hands can be at heart center. We pick up the foot, stretch it back. Opening into airplane first. Think left hip down. Crown of the head. And you're extending the top of your head forward. So with your own muscle strength getting taller. Gradually floating the fingertips towards the floor. Block, book, whatever you've got here to support. Bring the floor higher. Bend the right knee a little or a lot. Gradually let your head go. Feeling that inner trust. It's actually amazing sometimes how much we don't trust ourselves. <laughs> As you look at your feet, your toes all point towards the earth. You can point or flex the toes, whatever feels best. Keep the leg as straight as you can. If you notice the knee bending, make it straighter. It might be lower, but you'll work it higher over time. Walk the hands back in line with your foot. And eventually your right hand forearm behind the calf. Maybe your left hand catching the back of the right ankle. Maybe just play with moving your left hand around and trusting the balance of your right foot. Breathe. Stay with it. Bring the fingertips on either side of the front foot, bend the front knee, land into a lunge. Take a moment here, left hand down, right arm to the sky. Big expansive expression. Keep the hips floating so they're not sinking to the earth. Right arm comes forward inside the right foot. Left heel comes down, warrior two in the legs. Tuck your right sitting bone under. Feel your chest lean back and take your left arm to the sky. Eyes can look down or to the side or straight up. The leg and the arm press so firm that the hand is really there for stability, but not to weight bear. From your feet, come all the way up. 
warrior two. Extending through the elbows, but relaxing through the shoulders. Pulling in as you express out. Straighten your front leg. Pivot your right toes. Take a big breath in. Hips back, heart forward. As the hands reach the earth, you can do the exact same you did before. Hands walking, shoulder width apart. The elbows eventually stack on top of your wrists. Can you drop here everything you know? As Baron says, just to be willing to hear and learn from your body what's needed, what's possible. The knowledge, our intuition, it's already there. We just ignore it, we push it aside. Walk your hands out, lift halfway. Take your hands onto your shins and start to slide back up to standing. Pivot your front foot, come into warrior two. We're going back the way we went in. So cartwheel the hands down, pick up the back heel, square your hips first, then pick up your back foot. Shifting weight into your right foot, lift your heart halfway. The hands can come to heart or to hips. And we come all the way up to standing Tadasana. Good, now let's get centered and rooted with a final standing balance here, tree pose. Bend your right knee, foot to ankle, foot to calf, hands to heart. Slide the foot above the knee or below, but never against. Pull inward and rise upward. Where the foot is in space is not what this balance is about. It's about finding the ability to settle. To be back with the breath. Connecting our spirit our intelligence, our intuition. Our brain is functionally active all the time and our mind ever shifting thoughts and patterns. Bring your hands back to your heart. Bring the knee forward. Press the right foot down. Shift to the other side. Left knee open. Place on the ankle, calf. Or above to the inner thigh. And when we push that bent leg, we tend to push the hip out. So push the hip back into the foot to seal the deal. Then expressing upward and outward. Feeling the lightness through the limbs. You'll waver, you'll wobble, you'll fall right back in without judging it, without comparing it, just hearing it, feeling it, expressing where you are here and now. Bring your hands back to heart center. Bring the knee forward and your foot firmly to the floor. Sweep up, inhale, bow forward, exhale. Halfway lift, let's step to plank, knees up or down, chaturanga, halfway or all the way, shoulders back, up dog, knees and hips are lifted, cobra otherwise. And we'll meet back in puppy dog. Hips to heels, forearms released, forehead resting on the mat. A little turn of your head, side to side, a subtle hip sway. A 
and come back up into downward facing dog. Take your right leg to the sky. This time, bend the knee and open up the hip just to feel that there's an expression of hip on hip that you can roll more open, but keep the shoulders square. Now, if we transition a little more weight to our left foot, we'll bend the knee a little, we can lift the right knee higher. Press through your left hand, even put a little weight forward towards your left hand and get lighter on your right palm, maybe five fingers. Now, as the foot goes higher and behind you, we're gonna bend both knees, so both feet are gonna land, and we're going into wild things. So you can turn both feet around. You could even sit down here to adjust your feet. And then we're sending the heart up in a little back bend style, wild thing. Now both feet go flat to have that firm platform. You can sit down to come back again. We're just flipping over, right hand comes back to the mat, left toes spin, right leg to the sky. Let's step the right foot through, lower the left knee, stretch straight back into a half Hanumanasana half split. Pull your right toes to the sky, watch your knee doesn't drop, keep a micro bend there. Option to stay right here, keeping the front foot flat or slide the heel forward or walk your left knee back. And we all have degrees of this position, so choose where you are going to be. Trust that expression. Breathe for three. And bring the feet back into a lunge position. And we'll walk the left foot across to half pigeon or deer pose. So half pigeon would just be bringing the knee behind the wrist, keeping the hips squared forward so nothing else has changed. If the knees are sensitive, sit onto the outer right hip and bring your knees into uh, two 90 degree angles. And either way, you're hinging forward, perhaps coming onto your forearms, perhaps coming down onto the forehead. So whether you're in half pigeon with hips squared or deer pose to accommodate the knees, let your head rest. If you're on the forearms, the hands can always come up to hold the head. So ears, shoulders, and hips are at the same height. There are certainly times when we come to our mat and we feel the weight of the world, the weight of our life, of all the things we have going on and our practice carries that same weight. We choose to shift into how we foresee our practice unfolding. It can feel light and free and vibrant, or it can be a reflection. And I've all, always said the mat is where it shows up. It's our space to breathe and move and feel the energy and the floodgates open and close. Sometimes we put up the shield, we put on the mask, and. The practice might look good, but there's a lot more happening on the inside. And that's where the yoga is. That's where our practice truly is in expression. And starting to walk your hands back underneath wherever you are. And we'll find our way back into downward facing dog. Come to the top of a push-up, another vinyasa here, all the way or halfway, cobra or up dog. Releasing, sliding back into your puppy dog. Let the head, forearms rest. 
And our move well practice is about moving well in our mind, our body, and our breath. Let it come through as such. It doesn't mean that we have to pretend it's good. It's about digging a little deeper or looking into the murky water and being able to see the lotus flower, the beauty of the petals rising through the mud and the gunk and all the stuff. Gradually lift back into your downward dog. Step your left foot forward. Lower the right knee. Fingertips come back, half Hanumanasana. Pull your toes up. Try not to drop the knee. Keep the spine as long as you can, hinging forward here. If you're finding you're rounding, bend the knee a little more, make the spine long first, then work the legs straight. Don't weigh too much in your hands. Most of this weight should be in our legs still. If your hips are contorting, work at leveling. Taking a wider expression, perhaps, if it's available, whatever degree you're working with. It's taken me years to be able to create a, an expression of this pose that I feel is possible. <laughs> but now I know everything is possible, and it's just practice, it's just time. Pull the feet back into a lunge position, bring the hands forward, and then walk the left foot across and again into half pigeon or into deer. You can come to forearms, so either way. So if the hip is down, do make sure the knees come to align to the outer edges of the mat. If possible here, you'll hold the head or let the chest melt further and let the head rest. Now the head is resting because the weight is heavy and it can pull on the neck, but keep the lungs strong and building. Perhaps check back in with your 10 count inhale and your 10 count exhale. By this point, it might be a little more challenging, but it is possible. We've probably all had the experience of waking up to go to a job that we're definitely a no to, but we put on a yes mentality when deep down the no continues, that resistance is there, we procrastinate, we push it away, it's not something we want to do. And there will always be things we maybe don't want to do. But when we turn ourselves to move in a direction we allow ourselves to be a yes and a no. Now, if we want to get up early and do our practice, perhaps we're a no to that second glass of wine or a drink or late night with friends because we're a yes to our health and our well being. And, and it's definitely without judgment, it's just a choice. And gradually start to make your way back up and slide back into downward dog. We'll take one last vinyasa, high plank, knees up or down, exhale, low, up dog or cobra, your choice. We'll glide back into puppy dog.
And we'll sit up and bring our feet forward. Lie onto your back, coming into a bridge position. As you bend your knees, touch your heels with your fingertips. Tuck the shoulder blades under, head at neutral, hips to the sky. Try not to look around here. If anything, close your eyes. Bring your hands underneath if they meet. Tuck one shoulder, then the other as you lift your heart. Breathe for five, for four, chin off the chest, for three, for two, and then gradually releasing your hands and lowering your heart and your hips to the earth. Bring your soles of your feet together and your knees wide apart. Place your left hand on your heart and your right hand on your belly. Take that sipping steady breath in. And out. Scan your body for layers of holding patterns. They're just old patterns that you're shifting, clearing, cleansing, what you're a yes to here and now. And the knees back together, give a little squeeze into your chest, place your feet flat and out to the edges of your mat. Swing your knees side to side. Just to rinse your lower back, your hips, middle back, and then eventually stretching the legs into a final resting. That's one thing I've come to recognize in the practice is <laughs> Be willing to do the work. Be willing to sweat, to try, to rest, to put energy in, in the direction you choose. Perhaps it's your work. Perhaps it's your relationship. And we have many layers to our lives. And there will be times where balance is not there. We put more energy in one area and less in another. But it is the dance of yes and no. The oldest, shortest words, yes and no, are those which require the most thought. Pythagoras. As always, stay here a little longer if you have the time. As you feel called, you'll bring the breath back first with a more conscious and vigorous inhale. The sighing. And gradually move into your right side. And 
and eventually up to a seated position. As you bring your hands to greet at your heart center, close your eyes one more time. Take that steady breath in. Steady breath out. Namaste. Thank you as always. Thanks, Chrissy.